Will is our last caller for the day. Will in Tennessee, you're live on Skeptic Generation. How's it going? My dude. What's up? How are you? Um, I wanted. I was like fascinated when the other call. You said that you were navel gazing. I just love those type of topics. I know. Me. Also, too. some people V hates it. I know. Okay. Also, you have not said since you've been back that I can tell. You have not said the words. That's my Jimmy Jam. I'm kind of sad about it. <laughs> uh, so, I getting in navel gazing is absolutely my Jimmy Jams. Absolutely. <laughs> I I I. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay, so w- what did you want to talk about? Um, I just want to know, like, if there's any sort of easily digestible media that explains, like, the teleological argument and the ontological argument. Because I I tried to YouTube it, and it's all been just dense material that I don't understand. Yeah. Um. Okay. So um, I I can give you uh, some some basics here. Uh, okay. Okay. So from what I understand, the teleological te- the teleological and ontological argument both came from um, Saint Thomas Aquinas, or he's the one who put it in a way in his ways that really kind of took off. Um, so let me start with the teleological argument. I, I, it's been so long. I want to make sure I get it right. Um, so I believe the teleological argument. That's the watch. That's the watchmaker argument, right? The uh, you can think that again. Sorry. No worries. The teleological. That's the watchmaker argument, correct? I believe so. Honestly, I don't fully know. Okay. So the teleological argument uh, essentially says um, we live in a world that looks like it was created therefore it's more likely that it was created than it wasn't okay i believe that's it if i'm wrong please in the comments tell me um but i'm going to go into the watchmaker argument just in case that's correct uh so the watchmaker argument is uh puts you in a scenario that says you know you're walking down a beach you see in the sand there's a watch you pick it up and you intuitively understand that the watch was made so the watch didn't just come there naturally, even though you don't have evidence right. of that watch having been made. In the same way that we live in a world that is fine-tuned for the existence of life, and that fine-tuning is evidence of a creator that fine-tuned it that way. That way, we could. And so they bring up things. Mm-hmm. Like, they bring up things like, oh, if gravity was any different, if we were this much further away from ourselves in the orbit of the sun, or whatever. Um, that yeah. that. Uh, is that the kind of like is that ringing any bells for you? Yes, I am familiar with the watchmaker argument. I, okay. just, I didn't know that that's what the teleological argument was. It's my not understanding. No, no worries. Which fine, is which? Fine tuning. Um, so that's essentially that. Um, the response, the funniest one that I ever read and easiest to understand one was uh, was written by Terry Pratchett. Uh, no, 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 no. It wasn't Terry Pratchett. It was uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I believe. Oh, Douglas Adams? Douglas, yeah. I think it was Douglas Adams. Have you heard the, the pond story? Yeah, like this pond is made for me. Yeah, the, the, it, yeah. This, this pond awakens one day and looks and goes, oh, this hole that I'm in is exactly the shape of me, um, which <laughs> absolutely yeah. shows that I'm here on purpose and, and, and it's perfect. And as the sun rises and the... The, the 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 puddle starts to evaporate um you know it sees that and every step along the way it is perfectly sized to exactly where it's at because of that is evidence that you know it's 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 there purposefully in some way all the way until it evaporates completely convinced that um it was all part of some greater plan the fact is um i i we live we have a sample size of one when it comes to life on a planet really and because of that we don't have a way to determine how likely life is it could be incredibly likely and it could potentially happen a ton of different ways and so the idea that oh well it is just way you know it is impossible you know the the odds are impossible that it could be you know random or chance i think um is just uh it's 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 not under it's 
not understanding that we have that sample size of one. Um, a couple things that I would... Have you heard of the te- Texas sharpshooter fallacy? The what fallacy? The, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy? I don't believe so. Okay, so um, uh, <laughs> I'll give you one more and then we'll go on to the, the other piece that you want to talk about. Um, okay. Yeah, so... Uh, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy is that uh, just imagine you're you're driving through the country and you see uh, you know you're seeing barns and, and all of that right the tons and tons of fields and you you're driving and you see a barn that is just covered in bullseyes and you're like what the hell is going on you kind of you kind of drive up a little closer and you see that right in the center of the bullseye is an arrow on every single bullseye that's all over this polka dotted barn and you're like holy crap. Huh. This marksman, like, what the, I, 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 I need to know more about this. So you knock on the door and you say, hey, how did you do this? How did you get these perfect bullseyes on every single one? They say, oh, I can show you. No problem. So they walk out, they knock an arrow, they, they, they fire it at the barn. And then they go into the barn and they get a can of paint <laughs> and they draw the bullseye <laughs> around the arrow. Um, and. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the idea there is, um, that you're working your way back from something that you're sure of, you know, it's, it's wow. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that applies here as well, that you're, you're looking at, um, the fact that we're alive and and are assuming that it's perfectly impossible any other way. And you just don't have any evidence of that. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Yeah. (laughs) And then, uh, the ontological argument. Uh, yeah. uh, the ontological argument, I believe, is the one that says that um, God is necessary for all things to exist, right? That 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 oh. that um, I believe it's the first mover argument. I think, or it's uh, it's mm. it's there. So um, everything has a cause, and if you go back through causation, there has to have been a first mover. There has to, has to have been a first cause. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. This is all being digested now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the way I think about ontological is ontology is the study of what exists. And, hmm. and um, you know, you're, you're basically saying that God is necessary for existence. So, gotcha. So that's where I go from there. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into the details on that one, but um, I, there, there are so many different places where it breaks down. There's an assumption that all things have to have had a cause. Um, mm. there's, there's an assumption that anything works the way that we think it is. The, the way that we think it does, um, if all matter in the universe is condensed into a tiny speck, you know, that anything we understand would make any sense. Um, it, 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 it's just built on assumptions on assumptions on assumptions. And, and while it would be nice and feel good to ha- to, to use that causal link to, to go backwards, um, I don't think we're justified in doing that because we don't, we, we don't have that understanding. I mean, um, all you need to do is come up with a, any other potential reason for a universe having been created at all. You know, right. uh, I think Matt Dillahunty came up with, what about universe farting pixies? Uh, yeah, yeah. Was or it? the teacup. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, so, so Russell's teapot is, is a little bit different. Um, but I, gotcha. I get where you're going with it. Um, the, the idea is that, um, in that case, the universe farting pixie would be the God that they're describing. Um, ah. Yeah, it, it, and it makes them uncomfortable because they have this assumption of what that God is. But the fact is that you're getting really, really deistic at that point. And really, ultimately, when it comes to all of right. really big arguments, none of them are, are arguments for the existence of a biblical God, only of a creator God. Gotcha. Yeah. So oh, amazing. That has made everything digestible for me, and I really appreciate it. Oh, I was corrected. Sorry. Ontological argument. By definition, God is a being which none greater can be imagined. That's the ontological oh. argument. I got that wrong. Ah. Okay. Sorry. Eric Ketzer, thank you for correcting me. Um, 
a being that necessarily exists in reality is greater than a being that does not necessarily exist. It's something that I was talking about with our, our um, street epistemology caller. Um, huh. Okay, so honestly, Richard Dawkins gave me the the, the best version of it. Um, gotcha. He he's the one who said, "Okay, you know, imagine a maximally great burrito." You know, or a maximally spicy burrito, a maximally smelly thing. Um, <laughs> what, what, when you're talking about concepts of maximally, they're not necessarily. Um, it, it's it, it it just it falls apart as soon as it, it leaves the tiny sphere that it's in, um, and it, it's 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 weird mind games that try to define a god into existence. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, if somebody wants to talk about a maximal God, talk about a maximal burrito. Yeah. <laughs> you know? For sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Will, thank you for this. I really needed this. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> don't be afraid to say Jimmy Jams. <laughs> I won't forget. Thank you for, thank you for sticking, <laughs> sticking through this episode. It's been a weird one. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you.